my name is Denise and I've been assigned to give you a walking tour of Huntsville, Alabama downtown. If you could just tell me real quickly what your name is and whatever you want to say just quickly because we got, a, got an hour to work. My name is Osayas Morales, I am from Dominican Republic, so answer and theology major. Hi, my name is Bruno, I'm from Chile, and my major is instrumental music teaching. Hi, my name is Wendy Pozo, and I'm from Cuba, and my major is Bali. Yeah. Hey. Hi, my name, my name is Walfrido Fuentes, and I came from Cuba too. Hello, my name is Valencia Bullens, and I am from the Bahamas, and I'm a psychology major. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Shandai Ferrari, and I'm a history major. From Canada. I'm Benjamin Edison, what from Ghana, biology major. Hi guys, how are you? <laughs> I, I am Moses Morales, I am from Dominican Republic, biology yeah. major. Yeah. Uh, my name is Noel Troutman, I'm from Canada, and I'm a psychology major. Good day, my name is Wade Tobin, and I'm from the British Virgin Islands. My major is finance. My name is Johnny, I'm from Cuba. Uh, <laughs> I'm very competitive and working. <laughs> Hello, my name is Benjamin. We got in New York. No, I'm sorry, I'm from the Dominican Republic. <laughs> oh, I am a theology mayor. Hi, my name is Mario. Um, my major is um, music composition and recording, and I'm from Mexico. Woo! So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do three things. And then I'm going to go backwards. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off in kind of this kind of fresh new area, and then we're going to, we're going to move in more to the historic area, and then we're going to go to another fresh new area. But one of the things I want to share with you um, today is the fact that you are in Huntsville, Alabama, and if you have not already gone to the Huntsville, Alabama um, Chamber of Commerce website you will learn that this is the happening town, okay? So it is the number one, according to a magazine called US News and World Report, it is the number one place in America that is the most affordable place to live, okay? So it's, it's a bit, the living here is considered to be very, very affordable. It is the number three place in the United States for you to get a tech job so you can computer science majors and IT majors, man, you don't need to go anywhere else other than Huntsville, Alabama. This is the place, okay? And then also, another thing about Huntsville, Alabama is it is just a growing town. Um, right now, you've got um, Montgomery and Mobile and Birmingham, but in like three to four years, they're anticipating Huntsville to be bigger than all those other cities, okay? so. So you picked Oakwood, either Oakwood pick you, but you need to just hang out here in Huntsville because this is a really great town. So you're here, we're taking this tour at a very special time. Alabama is celebrating its 200th birthday, okay? So Alabama was born in 1819. And so this year we're celebrating 200 years of the state of Alabama. It just so happens Huntsville was actually born before the state. Huntsville was born in 1808. So Huntsville is actually older than the city. But we're gonna talk more about that later. We're just gonna get off right now. So let's get off and let's walk around Huntsville. You ready? Yeah. 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 Okay, so there's a sign called Gateway Greenway and they call it Gateway Greenway for several reasons, right? So it's the gateway to the northern part of town and the northern part of town is behind you, okay? It's the gateway to the historical districts, right? There's three historical districts. There's Five Points, Old Town, and Twickenham, and they're all kind of in this direction. It's the gateway to um, the historic Huntsville Depot, which is a, pa a passenger train depot, historic, and that's that way. It's the gateway to downtown, which is that way. And it's the gateway to our next stop, which is Veterans Memorial Park. So this space is called Gateway Greenway. What I like about Gateway Greenway is it's representative of about 47 acres of downtown green space, okay? So I have a nephew who lives in Philadelphia, and he's like, you mean y'all got green and grass and everything? Because all he knows is the city, so he's Park over on this side of the street, you got greenways and water on this 
side of the street. So um, it's one of my favorite spots to come over and here hang out. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to wind around and we're going to make our way to that bridge. The other thing I want to let you know about Gateway Greenway is that um, it's, it's just a reflective special space. Okay? So come on, let's go and just find a selfie spot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody in your family is into history or civil war history or those types of things um, it's got a lot of um, 1800 history in that uh, historic country depot so what we're going to do now is we're going to go around the corner and go to the veterans memorial park and there's four reasons i like veterans memorial park and i'll tell you those four reasons once we get around the corner this space where we're in right now is called Veterans Memorial Park. Veterans Memorial Park, and there's this side of it, and then we're gonna make our way to the other side, on the other side of that wall over there. And I'll give you maybe about three minutes to spend here, but I wanna tell you the four reasons I like Veterans Memorial Park. The four reasons I like Veterans Memorial Park is each one of these little kiosks where you see the little posters, it talks about a different American conflict. Okay, so you'll have the Vietnam conflict, the Korean War conflict, you know, World War I, all of those. So each one of these kiosks talks about the conflict and goes into details about it. So in that brown building, right in that vicinity, um, in the 1940s, there was a lady by the name of Dulcina DeBerry, okay? And so in the 1940s, when she moved to town to take care of her mom and dad who were getting sick, she moved to town she realized there were no library services available for people of color, okay? So if, if, if you want to go check out a book, sit in the library, if I want to go check out a book and sit in the library, we couldn't. People of color were not welcome in the public library. So she said, I'm gonna fix this problem. So where that brown building is, right over there, the, the, the church is no longer there, but in that space, there was a church called Lakeside, United Methodist Church. And in the basement of that church, she created a library so that people of color could go in and check out a book, read a book, have study hall, you know, um, have reading clubs and all of those types of things. So this lady, Josina DeBerry, in 1940, paved the way for people of color to get access to be educated through books. So I celebrate her because that's a really big deal for me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's move on. The rear side of a church called St. Mary of the Visitation. It's a Catholic worship place. Okay? Um, in this particular area, this is a significant church because the stones that you see, these white limestone that you see in the church, came from nearby Montesano Mountain. So um, there's not that many mountains in Alabama, <laughs> but here in Madison County, there's a place called Montesano. It's kind of in that direction. Um, but the white limestone that you see from this church was literally from a local area called Montesano, and they used these, those limestones to put that church together. So it's really cool. They weren't important bricks from some other space. It was local rock that was used to build that church. Thank you for the visitation. Before 10 years ago, this gray building was called the Heritage Club, okay? It was like one of those places that your business would take a client for lunch. It was kind of fancy, fancy place, white tablecloth, waiters, all those type of places. It was called the Heritage Club. It's been converted to other things now. But when I first moved to town, my company had a membership, you know, they take clients here and stuff. But anyway, in the year of 2007, um, right after he announced his candidacy, um, who became President Barack Obama, but at the time, Barack Obama was a candidate for the United States presidency, he came here at the Heritage Club and he spoke. So I think it's a really cool thing to know that Barack Obama was in this town, in this space, in the year 2007. And the story is told that when he left the building, um, there was somebody outside holding a big sign that said, anybody but you. And the story is told 
that he reached out his hand to that person and said, I don't care who you vote for, just as long as you vote. So I think it's really cool that um, the person who was a candidate actually did become the president, and he was actually here in this space at what was in the Heritage Club. Thank you, sir. All right. Because right now we're at the corner of Clinton and Washington Street. Um, does anybody know what women's suffrage is? So in the um, late 1800s, um, women couldn't vote. You know, you, you can give birth to a baby, <laughs> but you can't vote, all right? And so in this space, in the late 1800s, there was a local woman by the name of Virginia Clay Clopton. And she invited some national women, Susan B. Anthony, who's actually on, on the coin, and another lady by the name of Catherine Cat, to come here and to have a demonstration to say, you know, women really do need to vote. So in the late 1800s, right here in Huntsville, Alabama, where you're standing right now was City Hall, all right? And, the, and there was an event at the City Hall Auditorium to say women need to vote, all right? There was a big demonstration. A lot of people came, um, and that happened right where you're standing here, all right? Now, before we leave the corner, there's two more things I want to share with you. So this area of Washington Street and some of the other streets downtown, um, we call it the Civil Rights Movement. But in the you know 1950s, 1960s and beyond, people of color were not welcome in retail stores. So the stores that you see here now, there was even more retail stores here in this area in the 1950s and 1960s. So people of color were not welcome. So if you wanted to go in and buy a pair of shoes, you could buy the pair of shoes, but you definitely couldn't try on the shoes. If you had an event that you needed to get a dress for an occasion, you could go in the store and pay for the dress, but you couldn't try this dress on. If you were hungry and it was lunchtime and you wanted to get something to eat, you know, they would say, I'm so sorry, we don't serve you. So African Americans and other people of color were not respected. So the streets that we're on now were places where um, people of color demonstrated and fought stand up for the right to say we need a space we need a space to, to be able to go in and buy a dress to buy try on a pair of shoes to get something to eat so those stores may not be here anymore but let's remember the people who demonstrated who, who walked up and down these streets with signs and and to fought and stood up for what they believed in all right so what we're going to do we're all going to cross the street but i do want to show you something real quick that's right behind you okay so where are my science people at? I know I got a bunch of science folk up in here. My science people. I heard y'all some had some science majors. Science, what are you? Biology? Computer science? I knew some science folk up in here. So I want to celebrate my science people. So right here we have two local astronauts, okay? We got Mae Jemison, right? And we got Dr. Jan Davis. So Dr. Mae Jemison is from the area. She's from the, next, the town next door called Decatur, Alabama. And we got Dr. May, Dr. Jan Davis, who's actually from Huntsville. So these are two science people who grew up in the area, or were born in the area, and they did, grew up with the astronauts and do phenomenal things in the science world. So just like you, you can do phenomenal things in the science world just like them. So Dr. Mae Jemison uh, and Dr. Jan Davis, they were on the International Space Station. I believe it was mission number 42. And Dr. Mae Jemison has a high school in town named after her. And Dr. Jan Davis actually has um, a street named after her in an area called Research Park. So shout out to all my science peaks. Y'all can make a big footprint like these folks, okay? Now we're gonna go across the street. So the phenomenal thing that I like about Courthouse Square is Courthouse Square has always been there. Does anybody remember how old Huntsville, Alabama is? 
Right, exactly. Hustle, Alabama was founded in 1808, right? That's over 200 years ago. So if you look at any maps, drawings, illustration going back in the day, you can always see Courthouse Square. It's gonna be in that exact same spot. And there's always gonna be a north side, a south side, an east side, and a west side. So this area has always been here. It's always been here. I think it's phenomenal. Now, the thing about the, this what's called the west side, is the, the old name used to be Cotton Road. And the reason they called it Cotton Road was because the cotton farmers would come up with their giant bales and wagons and, and, and mules of cotton. And they would literally be on this side of the street, elbow to elbow, trying to sell their cotton. So it was a really big deal that that area right here is called Cotton Row, right? Now, what I want to emphasize to you, and we're gonna talk about it once we go down the steps, is this area, before it was founded by a man named John Hunt, this area was occupied by the Chickasaw and the Cherokee Indian Native American tribe. Okay, so they were actually here first. So we have to give a shout out to the indigenous people that were already here, the Chickasaw and the Cherokee. Now they did cede their land, but they were here first. And I want us to get that understanding straight. This particular courthouse is the fourth courthouse to stand in this particular area. And it's been here since the 1960s, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the street I'm going to point out another historic building to you, and then we're going to go down the steps to the park and look at some of the other newer areas. How about that? Does anybody want to ask me anything? Okay, we're going to cross the street. One of the most iconic buildings in Huntsville is the building with the beautiful six columns over here in the Greek revivalist architecture style. It's gone by a lot of different names, but it's sometimes referred to as First Alabama Bank and it was the oldest financial institution in the state of Alabama. So Huntsville was founded in 1805. This bank went up in 1835, okay? So it was been here almost as long as the city, right? This first Alabama bank, it's going by a bunch of different names. The other thing about this beautiful bank is the fact that it was, the architecture was done by a man by the name of George Steele, S-T-E-E-L-E. And George Steele was the architect behind many of the buildings in Huntsville. However, this particular building is somewhat publicly accessible where some of the other buildings are private homes that you can't really touch. So we can enjoy the beauty of this building. Now, back in the day when slavery was in existence, when, some, when there was like a slave owner that couldn't pay their debt, what they would do is they would literally throw the slave in jail and as collateral for when the folks would get their debt paid. Once their debt paid, they let the they, they slaves out, okay? So literally, slaves were held as collateral at the bottom of the bank building back in the day during that, that era. So I just want to let you know about that, okay? So, um, First National Bank, but the other thing about that bank building on that side is it is the oldest existing original building that's on the west side of the square, so it has a lot of historical significance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down some steps, and we're gonna be in an area called Big Spring Park, and there's several significant stories about that space that we need to talk about. Okay. So we're in an area called Big Spring Park, this is the east side of the park. We're going to go to the other side shortly, but I want to tell you some stories that are very important for this space, okay? I mentioned a man by the name of John Hunt, and he's considered to be the person that founded Huntsville, even though I already said that the indigenous people, the Cherokee and Chinsaw, were already here, all right? So, sometime prior to 1805, John Hunt left Tennessee, and as you know, Tennessee is right across the state line, John Hunt left Tennessee and he came here and he literally camped on the side of that bluff that you see. He camped there and he squatted, hoping to someday retain the right and the ownership of that land. 
that's a whole other story. But at least he didn't get ownership of the land, but at least he got the name. They did name the town after him, John Hunt. So when John Hunt left Tennessee, he squatted on the side of that bluff, and that's where um, he encamped, hoping to get ownership of the plant. Now, the other thing about this particular waterway, because you'll see when we go around, is the fact that this water system that you see has always been here, all right? It's a fresh water system. It's always been here. And um, there's a man, I'll get that back. The waterway that you see here was the waterway to produce water to all the homes in Huntsville up until like around the 19... 50. So this water system has always been here. It's one of the oldest water systems in the state. And um, it was literally utilized by the local utility company to pump water to people's houses. So it's been here for a long time and it served a lot of good purposes. Another thing that I want to share with you about this particular place is the fact that um, there was a, 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 a man by the name of Bartley Harris. And Bartley Harris was a part of a church called, at the time, in the during the slavery period, it was called Huntsville African Baptist Church. Okay, Huntsville African Baptist Church, and he was a part of that church. And so Bartley Harris had a legend that said that he baptized three thousand souls in Big Spring Park and Big Spring. So if you can imagine baptizing 3,000 folks in this water that you can, you and I can look at right here. I think it's amazing. Now, the original location of that congregation is about two blocks away from here. Um, and then the second location is about a block away from here. But today, the church still exists. It's called St. Bartley Primitive Baptist Church. You can go there. It's, it's open. And it is the oldest Negro congregation in the state of Alabama, the oldest Negro congregation. Next year, in the year 2020, that congregation will celebrate 200 years, okay? And it all started right here in the house of Alabama, and the namesake of the church, Bartley Harris, baptized 3,000 people in this space where we're talking about. Now, the last piece of information I want to tell you about this beautiful body of water that I love, this big spring, is the fact that we talked about the cotton traders being up there and being elbow to elbow with wagons and bales and mules holding cotton. Well, guess what? When they would sell their cotton, they would bring it down the hill and they would put it in boats and other types of vessels and they would be embargoed down this body of water and then it would make it to the Tennessee River and then it would go to elsewhere. So this body of water has been instrumental in the city for 200 years. It's a really big deal. Okay? Can I answer anybody's question? Okay? Now we're going to make our way to the other side of the park, but we got to go through this beautiful green space to get there. So enjoy the view until we cross the street. Museum. You've got the art museum. You've 
Advisor, right? Yes. Because we are good students. Yes. Because she did an amazing job. Thank, Thank you, Marcia so Mara. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.